If you are like me and treat challenging infections, you are always on the lookout for better diagnostic tools. I have found the DNA sequencing tests from Microgen Diagnostics to be clinically significant for my patients. These tests combine qPCR with NGS, and I'll show you an example test report for a female patient who is suffering from a chronic UTI. Like every laboratory test, the quality of the specimen is critical for significant and reliable results. And it's important to consider the highest quality sample in every clinical case to obtain optimal results. This patient's specimen was collected through a straight catheter to avoid sample contamination and to decrease the amount of normal genital flora. Here is the level 1 qPCR test report for this chronic UTI patient, which I received in less than 48 hours. As you can see, it shows four resistance genes that are present in the specimen, and a high bacterial load based on copies of DNA molecules. The bacterial load is similar to colony-forming unit counts in culture reports. The report also shows Pseudomonas originosa and Enterococcus faecalis present in the specimen. Before this test, I had the patient on levofloxacin. Seeing the quinolone resistance genes detected, I changed the prescription to phosphomycin to cover both pathogens and to keep the patient on oral treatment. Two days later, I received the level 2 NGS report. This is a unique and interesting technology that allows you to analyze the presence of all organisms not detected by PCR or even culture, but which may be relevant in a chronic UTI. Here is the complete list of microbes NGS detected in the specimen. And this column shows the relative abundance for each of these microbes. As you can see, it is possible that Pseudomonas originosa and Enterococcus faecalis are not the only pathogens in this chronic case. E. coli and even the anaerobe Bacteroides fragilis may play a role in this chronic infection. This is truly where NGS technology distinguishes itself from culture or PCR. NGS is able to identify anaerobes and fastidious organisms if they are present, and microbial detection is not as limited as it is with PCR panels. With NGS, MicrogenDX's database of over 50,000 species is guaranteed to tell me what bacteria or fungi are present. This report also reminds me of the possibility of biofilm or the presence of a microbiome in these chronic infections. The heightened antimicrobial resistance that biofilm facilitates could be one of the reasons this infection was difficult to treat. Given that we are looking at a polymicrobial community here, I needed to focus on the dominant species. In this case, these are E. coli and Bacteroides fragilis, so I added amoxicillin clavulanate to the phosphomycin prescription to provide enough coverage for these organisms. I typically look for oral antibiotics that cover the dominant species and are narrow spectrum. If I have the patient on an antimicrobial already, I look at what's not covered and decide if it's necessary to supplement. My antibiotic choice may not cover all the microbes, and that's okay. I acknowledge the presence of a healthy microbiome, and if necessary, I can do a follow-up test. No diagnostic tool is complete on its own, and a clinical correlation is important, but the Microgen DX qPCR plus NGS test is a valuable piece of my diagnostic toolbox. One final thing to note about the test report is that the antibiotics in the report have not been tested for sensitivity, as is typically done in a CNS report. These antimicrobials are suggestions based on Sanford and Johns Hopkins antimicrobial guides. All we know here is that resistance genes have been detected, and I recommend you use your institution's antibiogram for guidance.